Okay, we're back down in the shop today. Um, I just wanted to go over one really quick uh, item that really stumps a lot of people, and a lot of folks have actually got stumped to the point of selling the machine. Uh, either right after they bought it, they can't figure out how to get it to work, or they have uh, run a program without really paying attention to what was going on and got their machine or their Fanuc control in a state that they can't figure out what's going on. And uh, this is probably one of the most frustrating things I've run into, um, and I'm sure others have run into it as well. Uh, I've, if you do a search for Fanuc not ready, um, with no other alarms, uh, all kinds of suggestions come up. And most of the suggestions that come up are correct. Uh, uh, but I think a lot of people maybe don't understand it. Um, and that suggestion is, is that you probably got a hard limit uh, on one of your table axes or the Z axis uh, that where it's actually went so far it's hit a hard safety stop and won't let the, uh, the axis control come up and you basically get a not ready and it's really hard to determine. Uh, it's not super apparent on the machine what has actually occurred. And today, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to check that and how to solve it uh, a lot simpler uh, than what most people assume they're going, they have to do uh, to get the machine back up and going. Okay, so I've got my rotary phase converter turned on. The machine is turned on. I've uh, got air. Uh, you need to do all of those things. You need to make sure that you've got air. You need to make sure all your power rails are correct. And uh, What's going to happen is I'm going to turn the machine on. We're just going to kind of simulate because um, it does come up in the not ready uh, anyway. And what will happen is I won't be able, I wouldn't normally be able to hit the, uh, the ready switch and have it turn on uh, if you exhibit this problem. So if, if all else fails, this is what you need to check, uh, what I'm going to show you uh, to get your machine back running. So we're turning on the control now. It's going to boot. Okay, when it gets booted up, you're gonna have a not ready here. Now, when this is occurring, you'll hit the not ready switch and it will not start. Um, some machines on my hard limit switches, even my emergency bypass, uh, which if you're wondering what that is, um, if, you, if you're in a soft limit or something like that, you can hit that emergency bypass, hold it, and still move the handle and get, get the machine off the soft limit. On my machine, if you've hit the hard limit, it will not get past this not, not ready, and there's no way to fix it uh, from the machine control. Um, so, kind of simulate here. This will start. I'll start here in a second just to show you. But um, so, pretend that I hit this NC ready, and nothing happens. It stays in this not ready state. A couple things to check: Do you have air pressure? Is all of the is your three phase actually all on? Do you have a rotary converter um, or some kind of converter to, to make three phase? Is that other leg there? If all that checks out and everything's good, more than likely, uh, where this happens with me, where I, sometimes I forget to set a work offset, and I'll actually run it, and it'll it'll be in a rapid mode, and it'll actually rapid the z-axis up above uh, into the hard limit, and it'll stop the machine. The only way to fix it is to do the following. Um, there are a couple of methods. I'm going to show you the easiest one. Hmm. When I've hit the ready, my machine is not in this state, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so on my machine, if it's the Z-axis, the a couple of things, the first time that I did this, I actually disassembled that whole spindle cover there, unscrewed um, the hard limit switch. Uh, there was really no way to get it to relax the switch without unscrewing it, um, and that's the way I did it. Now, to take that cover off takes about an hour mainly because you've got the hard line that comes into the side there uh, where the water uh, or coolant line is. So really difficult. So a simpler way to fix it is to simply power down your machine completely. What I do is I'll climb up into the machine and I'll reach up at the on your spindle ball screw. I've got a coupler that you can never actually reach in there with the power off. You do want to make sure the power's off. You can basically just turn that ball screw. Um, you can turn the servo and everything. There's no brake applied. And what you want to do is just fill the serv fill the, uh, the whole X assembly and screw it down. The same goes for this. I do have to take one small cover off uh, on the X and the Y, but it's way easier than trying to get to that switch and actually removing it. 
Um, so that, that's the that's the big thing is uh, if you've got one of these machines or know somebody, somebody that's had one of these machines that's had this trouble, um, I've been to lots of people with this with this issue, um, and that, it's a machine they just bought and they didn't realize what had happened. Everything on my machine when it happens looks normal. It's just you know we're talking a couple of millimeters too high on the uh, on the z-axis and all the machine stops and there's no way to get it to do anything or work or function unless you fix that issue. Now some machines have this emergency bypass. Always try that to see if that works. Um, if you get into a, looking at it electrically, if you've got your machine manual, uh, I'll grab my machine manual. So you'll have a manual like this. I don't have like really super detailed, but I do have a paper copy of a lighter diagram. You can look on that lighter diagram and on mine, they're actually labeled the wiring is labeled in the electrical cabinet the way that it's done on the, the diagram. So you can actually go back there. Generally, it's a 24 volt signal. Uh, it's an input signal into the PMC. And you can see if that's uh, tripped or not, whether it's actually on or not. And like I say, a lot of machines, this emergency bypass will bypass the hard limits. Mine does not. Uh, it will bypass soft limits. One uh, other step, and use this with caution. This is on the Fanuc OM. There's a method, there's a, a soft limit. Uh, you can basically turn them off when you boot it. So with the machine all the way off, I'm gonna just turn the machine off. So the machine all the way off, as we turn it on, it's called the pecan method. So you need to be real careful because if you hit the wrong key combination, you can erase all the parameters on your machine. What you would do is you would hold P and cancel while it's booting, and that'll erase the soft limits. So if, I, if I've got my rapids turned down and I run a program that runs my Z-axis to, to the soft stop, um, I can actually do my emergency bypass, or if I turn the machine off and leave it in that mode where it thinks it's still in the soft limit and I can't get it to go into ready state or something, I can actually manually move the... Uh, x-axis. I can hold P and cancel when it boots, when you turn it on. Um, it does take a little bit longer to boot, at least it does on my machine while you're holding that. It will disable the soft limits, so that gets you past one level. Uh, but what I've seen most is this hard limit failure, and it's really easy to fix if you know what it is. Uh, so if that happens to you, try to try to basically, you know, Bring your Z-axis down, make sure your machine's powered off just by manually turning the ball screw. Bring your X and Y in a little bit where you know it's not on any of the soft, any of the hard limit switches, and then reboot. Um, that generally will fix the issue. Uh, if you've got another different alarm, you've got a different problem, uh, and it usually will tell you. Uh, big thing to check is check your, what your servo drive's saying. Uh, see if it's in alarm state, usually it'll be like AL, you know, 14, et cetera. That means there's no communication. Uh, always check that stuff. And whatever you do, if you do have a running machine now, especially if it's one that you just bought, um, what I did on my machine when I first got it and I first got it running is I just went through and a lot of it's become part of these YouTube videos is I videoed everything. What lights are on, what lights are off, what looks normal, what doesn't look normal. Another uh, good troubleshooting thing to do while your machine is running well is to go back and actually label my all my relays in the back panel um, have LEDs on them, so you can tell whether they're on, off, etc. And that provides you a really, really good opportunity while the machine is running normally to determine what each one of those relays do. So I went down there and saw the little clear cases. So I've marked with a magic marker what each one does, uh, what its normal state is, given you know just turn the machine up and zero home. What is it supposed to look like? invaluable information, especially when you're dealing with an older machine, especially when you're dealing with a home shop where you don't have, you know, an expert to come look at these. And, and by no means am I an expert on this. Everything I've learned, I've learned on my own running these machines. Uh, and it's just, it's the really good practice to kind of know what your machine does, especially while it's running. Worst thing you can do is run a machine for a year, never look back there. And then when you do need to know what something's doing, you miss that opportunity because now the machine's broke or doing something different. Anyway, I hope these videos are helping some of y'all out. Uh, kind of encouraging people to uh, save a lot of these machines. I see a lot of them going in the scrap pile that are in great shape. 
my particular machine has ran well for over a year now and uh, I, I definitely made my money back on it anyway thanks a lot for watching we'll see you on the next one be sure to subscribe and like